see these? Oh yeah. These are onions. You probably figured that out. They're for the beginning of, what are we calling this? The Christmas breakfast week. God, do they smell good. And, wow. and even if you don't celebrate Christmas, you could eat all the food that we're making to this yeah. week. This week, because who doesn't like breakfast? My favorite meal. So I promised something a, a, a Mexican Latino in nature, and we're going to make a um, a um, tamale hash, a baked egg tamale hash. I think that's the way I want to say that. Wow. So you would recognize these as tamales, correct? Nice. Yep. Corn husk. Inside is the 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 corn uh, masa. Uh, with a beef filling and then they're rolled up in these things. You put the mass in here and then you put the beef or the chicken or whatever kind and then roll them up and then these get steamed. So then like this, you can make your own, you can buy them, you can get them from somebody's grandmother that makes them, whatever. Just get yourself some. There's even frozen ones out there that are, that are not terrible. Trader Joe's has great ones. Oh, they do? Okay. So the onions are good. So now what we want to do is we want to get a knife we want to cut these guys up, because these guys are obviously now going in this pan, which I should keep on the heat. So, once again, I feel obligated to rush. Why? I don't know. It's the weirdest thing, man. I, ha I have this... This I is like this normal live cast stuff now, just rushing. I know. Why? I feel no, like I, I got to okay, rush. You want to know? I know why. Why? The reason you feel rushed is when you know that you've made given yourself a lot of stuff to do. But I don't have a lot of stuff to do. You you feel rushed because you pressure yourself. Okay, now, I can think. Deep down, you know that there's something that you think I might give you an eye about, and that's what makes you feel rushed. You give me shit about everything. <laughs> so you're basically rushed on everything you do. That's it, basically. So now the tamales just go in here. Do you want to watch this? Come on, come yeah. on, come on, come on. Well, people like to see these whoa, things. Ready? Whoa, whoa. Yep. Boom. Nice. Like that. Such and an interesting use of tamales. Boom, like that. What do you mean, there, big boy? This is kind of like you know, if you did chopped, and then your secret oh, ingredient was tamales. Yes. I see what you're saying. Because tamales okay. is already a thing in and of itself. Right. So now these they they need to get heated through. Here's the beautiful part of this. What makes this work so well is that the tamales, and I need a, I need a spoon, is that the tamales are already seasoned, right? The beef is seasoned, lots of flavor. So I don't feel the need to go in here now and have to start adding chili powder and cumin and salt and pepper and all that stuff. I mean, of course, taste it and make sure that you're digging the way it's tasting. If it needs something, add it. But it's a pretty simple little recipe that lets you just do this, mix it all around, and then we're going to figure out the egg part. Now, look at you could cook this in this pan. I'm dropping tamale all over. You could cook this in this pan and then do like a couple of fried eggs on top of it. Just serve it that way. But we're not going to do that. We're going to we're going to put the eggs on top of this and then cook this whole thing in the oven. And the eggs are going to cook nicely just in these little pockets that we're going to make. Oh, wow. Well, wow, that smells so good. It does smell good here, doesn't it? And the fact that it's getting all munched up doesn't make any difference. We don't... I just burnt my finger. Did you notice? Badly? No. Not, I don't think badly. Well, you can see it's red already. Can you, can you see that? On, on what? Uh, nope, too close. Back a little up. bit. I'm having a hard time focusing. That's okay. Forget it. I did this. I scooped and my finger was here. See that? And it wiped the pan. Oh, jeez. So I just want all this hot all the way through. Getting it a little crispy. Now, just let it finish. Okay. Watch this. Let me get some eggs. Uh, and I, I want... I'm not putting like one egg in this. I'm going to do three because I want it to be good. I don't, four would be a bit of a stretch with this size pan. So now I'm going to do this. Check this out. I'm going to take a little cup to make a little, little indentation. There, there. Cool. And there. It's like magic. 
We hope it's going to be magic. The egg goes in to each one of these. Try not to break it. Breaking it would suck. Okay. Back up, Max. I gotta get some cheese out of the fridge. I will give this just a little salt and pepper because if you get a bite, I always say this, if you get a bite of an ingredient separate from all the other ingredients, it should have flavor to it. Don't not flavor something because you think that you don't need to. You're going to say, oh, everything else has got flavor. I don't need to do the eggs. But if you take a bite of just egg and it's got no flavor, then you fail. So here we go. Now a little cheese on top. Come on, Massey. Come on. To be gentle near the egg, because honestly, the cheese will break it. So go gentle, right? And that's it. And now this thing, turn off this. Four hundred degree oven. And you know, this kind of reminds you of uh, chilaquiles, in a way. Could be a little bit. I mean, the chilaquiles that we made on the show, I did in the microwave. That's true. But you know, just in general, uh, it's I know corn. what you're saying. It's I know what you're saying. I, I get the egg. You know what I'm saying? I get the look at this. There's here. There's this on the ground. All right. Okay, uh, I'm going to sit at the table, we're going to chat, talk about some things, uh, don't go away. Alright, so I got the oven set for 10 minutes, you know it's a tricky thing, it depends, you know, the eggs are going to cook as the eggs are going to cook, and generally I'd say maybe 15 minutes, but the heat of what they're sitting on top of is also going to influence the way the eggs cook. So better to go less time, check them, and then say, oh, they still need a few more minutes, than to get them when they're just like yellow hockey pucks. Because nobody wants that. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yes. Thank you. What do I have to talk about here? You usually have a lot of news that you talk about. Mm -hmm. Judge orders Hui Fong Foods to stop shipping sriracha until mid-January. What? So it's actually happening? Uh, well, it looks like it. Despite last month's ruling that they were to halt production... Uh, there was some hope that we'd have sriracha this Christmas. Now it appears we can't even have that. The LA Times reports that a judge has ordered Hui Fong to halt all shipments of their already made sauce for 30 days. Wait, if you why? remember the problem, the neighborhood around the sriracha factory was complaining that the strong of chilies cooking was too strong and hurt their eyes and made them cough and stuff like that. Interesting. They went to court. And the judge said, stop. And they said, we're not going to stop. We, I think there's a sign outside the factory that says we don't. Can you look, Lynn? A sign outside the factory. I think there's a sign outside the factory right now that says something like we're, we're not making bombs or something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> there are oh, three sauces, sriracha, chili, garlic, and sambal alek must be held for at least 30 days before they can be shipped to food distributors around the country. Here's what it says. <laughs> no tear gas. Ma Thank you. That's a nice factory for a sriracha. By the way, have you watched the sriracha movie yet? The, the what? Say oh, what? Sriracha movie, ladies and gentlemen. You can go to... Starring uh, who? Well, here it is. Hold on. It's right here. <laughs> right there on my page. It's a documentary. It's a documentary about them. Wow. Look at that. Five bucks to watch the 33-minute movie. You can watch the uh, minute 13-second trailer for free, though. It, it, what's crazy is that yeah. Sriracha's been around for so long, but only in recent time has it shot up in popularity. And it's like... It's unbelievable. Uh, I, it's I forgot unbelievable. what the stat was, but the, their growth for just Sriracha alone crazy. has been And I have phenomenal. to say, all of this press is only doing great things for them. I'm sure. This is You dream for stuff like this. Oh, yeah. I bet you this is the Hui Fong people working the wheels in the back you think so yeah maybe you think the hui fong people are like putting something really bad in the uh up the uh, the tube so it goes out to the neighbors so the neighbors are complaining maybe because it's not I, really the sriracha i read a story about people who have toured the sriracha factory like you can't smell a thing yeah well but don't forget the, the 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 sauce is made in giant enclosed cauldron like things true that go up a big vent pipe and they're vented outside of the building so you wouldn't smell it inside 
You're only going to smell it outside. Question is where outside and really, is it as bad as, as everybody says? Uh, I haven't heard any independent source say that they've set up shop on a neighborhood street for a week or two and just sat and breathed all day long and it did or did not bother them. It'd be interesting to see if that happened. Meanwhile, I have my uh, Sriracha sweatshirt. Do you guys? No. Huh? Probably should get one. Should get one. Hmm. I'm sorry. I I put this story on my Facebook. Uh Uh-huh. <clears throat> it's called how to get your restaurant publicity uh around mainline.com is a philadelphia blog site and that's the woman right there what's her uh-huh. name what's her name hold on oh sarah lockhart okay mm-hmm. yeah she sends out an email to a number of undisclosed restaurants one of them so pissed by her email that they sent the copy of it to the press and it reads the subject is so her last name is lockhart Host the awesome Lockards on Christmas Eve. Good evening. Every Christmas, my family enjoys an amazing night dining out, and this year I'm offering you the exciting opportunity to be our restaurant that hosts us. The host restaurant will get approximately 1000 bucks in PR with around mainline.com. Your Facebook posts, you'll get Instagram photos during the dining experience, newsletter ads, blah, 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 listed in our Christmas Eve dining guide. We're asking for the following in return. Dinner for five, drinks and food compensated. We will tip according to the value to the server. Mm -hmm. This is a very innovative and effective way to promote your restaurant on this very competitive evening and reach tens of thousands of local foodies. What? Mm. Please note, first come, first serve. Be the top restaurant we recommend this Christmas. They've got like, I don't know, eight, 9,000 people on their Twitter. They got like 3,000 people in their newsletter. Okay. I was disgusted by this. That's really disgusting. In fact, she's going to say, this is the restaurant that we chose to go to. Therefore, they're great. When she's just looking for an effing free handout meal. It's terrible. But wait. Yes. Uh, th- what? I mean, what is really the difference between that yeah. and saying, give us this amount of money for advertising and then we will say that we go to this restaurant every Friday. We I'm used disgusted to have a deal with, with I'm Donovan's disgusted, Steakhouse. I'm disgusted I just with don't that see too. how it's very much different. I don't, I'm disgusted with that too. Really? Yeah. But it's I just believe, advertising. I believe it. It's just a Here, different form. No, so would it have been better if she had said, no, 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 do all this and then you'll pay us $1,000? Here's advertising. I put an ad in your magazine. It says, come to Sam's restaurant. Right? Maybe, okay, but... Uh, so this is not real. But the, 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 you understand that, that we're in a new age. This is new media, new technology that's clearly being put to use for advertising. I believe that blogs and online and all that kind of stuff is new media. This, that's sleaze media to me. I don't like I, that. I don't, I don't are, buy it. Are you, are, you, are you having a problem with the things that they're offering or with the fact that she said dinner and the, what we want to be paid in is dinner? I have a problem with her saying, if you host us for our Christmas dinner, uh-huh. we will go online and say... We chose you. You're the best restaurant. Yes. We, uh, I'm so great that when we decide where we want to go to eat, they must be a great place. Therefore, this restaurant that's hosting us is a great place. Or I'm so great that you would behoove you to have me at your restaurant. And here are the following what terms. What is she? She's nothing. And even if she was something, it's still wrong. I don't I, like it. I just think it's... I, I, I don't do. like it. I think it's wrong when you mix your advertisement Thank or you. your marketing with what you do as a main source of your... I'm, I'm guessing it's the main source of her income or I guess. Whatever. I don't know. I just think it's whack. It is whack. I mean... It's dumb. But it's also very in line with what people do on the internet nowadays. Things that they just... They feel entitled to. So they'll be like, well, this is me. I'm going to make I, it... I That's like the business with Instagram. I mean, people generate thousands and thousands of followers and then they endorse products and make money and make right. a living out of it right but it's one thing if you're transparent about it mm-hmm. yeah, this is no transparency here she's trying to make this look like she's a godsend to a restaurant and this is her whole deal mm-hmm. i'm coming i went there look where we went for dinner last night we chose them. That's not how it goes. So wait, what about like celebrities d- doing appearances at clubs or restaurants? Like what if a restaurant pays I, a celebrity $10,000 to come in? I think that's a paid in, that's a paid appearance. 
So, but how is that? I think different? everybody well, knows. No, I think, everybody knows Max, about that. I think that. what you're missing is that she sent this email to the restaurant soliciting this, and they didn't ask her for it. There's a big difference between that. So they're not saying we'll I pay guess. you to come. Like Tom Brady, not, I, I know, like, like, like Guy Fieri, come so like, eat at our restaurant so people will think you're great. Well, I know. Though, for, by the way, I have heard though, and I don't know if this is true. I have mm-hmm. not confirmed this. That to be on diners, drive-ins, and dives now, there is money to exchange his hands. I don't know if that's true, mm-hmm. but I would say this: any restaurant that I know that has had a a Guy Fieri triple D moment, their business has gone from wherever level it was to there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. It's like that. Hold on. I got to check this out. I got to check this oot. It smells good, dude. Yeah. You know what? That's a, like, that's only, a, that's about three minutes away. Hell yeah. Three minutes away. And then, and then Bob's your uncle and we get to eat that. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So anyway. Oh, I didn't talk about my, my car issue. Yes, I need to hear this. Yeah, it's been a so couple I'm coming episodes. back. I'm com- I know I keep, I keep promising to. I'm coming back from an event downtown a couple weeks ago. I'm driving along. Everything's going great until all of a sudden the car starts to like would do a weird thing. Put my foot on the gas. Nothing's happening. Pull over to the side of the road. I look at the gas gauge and it's down. But the thing, the little message comes up in the little uh, digital w- window thing. What is it called? Your readout. Mm-hmm. The readout. The readout. Um, drivetrain malfunction. Oh, Ugh. sounds terrible. So I stopped the car. I'm pissed off. I was trying to get home. It was Zach's last night. I was coming home to make dinner before he went back to school. There's fillets that I'd already called Kelly and said, take them out of the fridge. So I look at this thing and I'm pissed. I'm off the shoulder in a kind of a weird spot. And now I call uh, Kelly and say, I'm going to be late. I push the little like emergency button. It goes to BMW. They get you on the phone. They talk to you for a second. They put you over to the people. Then you get the repair people on the phone. They say, we'll be there in an hour and a half, maybe. Oh, well, I'm not sitting here waiting. I'm not going to wait. I go, can I leave the key? She goes, yeah. Lock the car doors, leave the front driver's door open. Huh? And leave the key like under the mat or something. Oh, okay. But I'm not leaving my car unlocked. Because it looks, it's just a sitting duck. Mm-hmm. I go, fine. How about if I lock all the cars and I put the, the keys on the back tire? She goes, that's fine. We'll tell the repair people that. I call Uber. The guy comes, picks me up. I go home. They pick up the car. The car dealership calls the next day. It's Saturday. He goes, we got your car. Can't do anything with it till Monday morning. I go, no problem. He'll call you then. and We'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. He goes, sometimes these drivetrain things, it's, it's like a, you get like a rock or something in there that throws the whole thing off. And it, like, it just shuts itself down. I go, okay. I'm bummed. I don't want this to happen, but whatever. It is what it is. Guy calls me Monday afternoon. He goes, got the car, had it all checked out. And I go, yeah, what is it? He goes, you're out of gas. What? I go, what? He goes, you were out of gas. We checked everything. Then we saw that the... How in God's name did you not realize that? What? You know, I saw that it was on E. And then your car stopped and you were like, well, it must be the the, drivetrain. It said drivetrain malfunction. I just assumed the drivetrain malfunction meant that all the gauges went kablooey on me. (laughs) That's what happens when you don't know anything about cars like us. I know nothing. We know nothing about cars. <laughs> you're like, wait, wait. You, you know, no. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna style with you this. If your smart BMW, German engineered BMW, yes, tells yes. you there's a drivetrain malfunction when you're out of gas, keep going, and it doesn't say you're out of gas. Thank you. That cannot. I, I don't. Thank believe you. For a second, that's your fault. I say we leave it right there and get this out of the oven before we make <laughs> me feel any more stupid right now. It's time to eat. Let's go. Guess what? It looks amazing. Guess what? I let the eggs cook too long. Uh. <laughs> I should that story when I checked it. I should have stopped. I shouldn't have said. I said a couple minutes. I went like three. Damn it! Do we have non-runny yolks now? We have non-runny yolks. Oh god, that's death to this. I don't even want to show this dish now. I'm gonna have to fake it, <laughs> like that rest that online person. Damn it! Come here and look. No, you don't know that man. They look beautiful. It- 
It seriously does. You know what? I see some runny yolk. No, you don't. You see this yolk. Right there. It looks like it's yeah, runny. Yeah, that'll be fine, dude. Yeah, it looks look at a little soft. Look at that. That'll be fine. I'm not super. You, I could bounce a freaking quarter off of that, man. Yeah, maybe not. That one might be okay. I like soft custardy yolks, too, Well, man. guess what? That's not what you're getting here. <laughs> Let's try and get the some cheese. breakage in there. Oh, yeah, God. no, that looks fine, man. It's custardy. Ugh, that's the word you're going with? Yeah, it's like a soft boiled egg, dude. Okay, so here, I'm going to just take a bite. Jordan's going to eat this tonight. Oh, my God, it's going to be so hot. It's going to be really good. It's just going to be so hot. I wanted them to be runny. I was so mad. You know, we went to Moza uh, last night. Oh, was it good? It was pretty good. Ooh. We had a, the bacon egg pizza thing, potato, bacon, egg, yeah, yeah. really good. Four little pieces of bacon. There was five of us. Somebody said, well, they normally cut it in fours. So one little, t it was like this big. So you get a piece pieces. of bacon. So I got a piece of bacon. Three other guys didn't, uh, th four other guys, three other guys didn't, and one guy didn't. And one egg yolk that was not runny as it should have been. But that's freaking great. Mm. If the yolks were runny, it'd be amazing. Lynn will take the picture. It's going to look great because it looks like it's supposed to be a <laughs> runny yolk. You're not going to know. That's amazing. Make that, but just keep your eye on it. Don't let it go too far. I'm so mad. Wait, did the you only thing worse than this is what the hell I did to those crab cakes last week. <laughs> Check out last week's crab what cakes. What a disaster. Check them out. So mad. All right. Thanks for hanging out. Always have fun with you. And you, Lynn, and you, Max. Especially when we're not fighting. Yeah. And I'm mad at you that when I was yelling at Jordan the other day, you didn't put the camera on him. <laughs> that was a good moment. Could have been an amazing moment that was lost forever. All right, thanks for hanging out. Um, more great. It's uh, Christmas breakfast week, so more great stuff all this week. Don't eat bad food. Thanks for hanging out with us. See you soon. Mm -hmm.